Well, hi everyone. Welcome to this year's Classroom to Career. I'm Haley Savage. I'm the Conference and Events Manager here at the Texas Restaurant Association. We're so glad to have you all back again this year for another great series of Classroom to Career. This will be recorded and posted on YouTube for you to show your classrooms and your students later on. But if you're joining us live, please take advantage of the Q&A box down below and ask some questions live for our panelists. But I'd like to introduce Laura and her Marriott International team. Thank you so much, Laura and team, for uh, making the time to speak with our students and educators. Uh, we're so thankful that y'all are here. Yes, of course. Thank you for having us. Um, so like Haley said, my name is Laura. I am the Market Human Resources Manager for Marriott International in the Dallas-Fort Worth market. Um, so today I'm going to be talking with you all a little bit about our company, our values, um, culture and benefits within Marriott, career opportunities and career paths. And I also have a few of our chefs um, with me today who are going to be able to go over a little bit more in depth the culinary career path, how they got to be where they are, and their advice for all of you. Um, and then they'll be here for our question and answer portion as well. So I will get started. Sorry, technical difficulty here. There we go. Okay, so first off, I wanna take a look at the company as a whole for Marriott International. So our company has over 7,000 properties worldwide. So there's plenty of opportunity here. And we're located in over 134 countries and 85 languages spoken by our associates. So we have a very diverse population that's continuously growing. Um, in the Dallas-Fort Worth market, where we are all located, um, we do have a select number of these brands. We have about 13 properties there. Overall, in Marriott, we have over 30 brands within our portfolio. So most people, when they think Marriott, they think of the red Marriott M, and they might not understand that there are actually a lot of different brands and a lot of different opportunities across the portfolio. So we have everything from our luxury brands like Ritz-Carlton, St. Regis. Um, we have our premium brands, Marriott, Sheraton, and then our select service ones too. So we have things like the courtyard, we have extended stay properties, or little funky properties like our Moxie brand. So there's every type of brand for our guest who wants to stay at Marriott, as well as different types of associates who want to work at different types of brands. In the Dallas-Fort Worth area, um, these are the ho hotels that I represent. Um, so we have a few brands here. We have our classic Marriott branding um, in Dallas, Plano, and Westlake. We have three Westin hotels um, in Dallas and Irving and then three Renaissance hotels. Um, we also have a Ritz-Carlton in Dallas, Sheraton in Dallas, and a W. Um, in addition to these, there are going to be finished hotel as well. So we'll be able to introduce the JW brand to the area, as well as adding another Ritz-Carlton. Um, so with that, there are lots of opportunities here. Um, and if you're not located in the Dallas-Fort Worth market, you're in other places in Texas, as long as it's a managed Marriott property, so the job will be posted on marriott.com slash careers, everything in this presentation would apply to you as well. So it's not just if you're interested in these properties. Throughout all of our properties and our company, um, we are guided by our values, vision, and our purpose. Um, so we have five core values that embody everything we do here at Marriott, all stemming from our roots. The first, and probably the one that's most common you're gonna be hearing, is putting people first. So this vision drives the way we do business, um, and it's gonna be the one that your managers are hearing. We're putting not only our guests first, but we're gonna be putting our associates first too in everything that we're doing. Secondly, we want to pursue excellence. So this is dedication to customer service through service excellence. Embracing change means success is never final. We're going to be continuing to adapt with that change to create the best guest experience. Acting with integrity, how we do business is just as important as the business we do. And serving our world, our spirit to serve makes our culture more vibrant, our business stronger, and the world a better place. We're also guided by our vision to be the world's favorite travel company. Um, as it stands now, Marriott is already the largest travel company in the world, but we want to take that a step further and be the favorite of all of our guests um, and our associates. And our purpose is to open the doors to opportunity. 
So in line with putting people first, um, working with Marriott, there is a large focus on what the culture is. And culture is very, very important to Marriott. And it's so important that usually culture can kind of be this elusive thing that people refer to as being great. But Marriott takes the time to actually name it and make it an initiative. So our culture is represented through our take care program. So take care is just an example of how we are putting those people, putting people first. Um, it's a wellness initiative, and there are three pillars to it. Um, opportunity, community, and purpose. Opportunity, we want to make sure that we have opportunities for you all to grow your career and improve yourself while working with Marriott. Community, there's going to be a big focus on teamwork and collaboration in your jobs. Um, we want to share respect and kindness and have that sense of belonging, um, no matter what community you're coming from. Lastly, purpose. Associates are a part of something meaningful and can contribute to a more compassionate world. So all these together are a take care program. Opportunity um, is a big pillar within us and it's comp comprised of three different um, like sub pillars, if you will. So learning and growing, we wanna make sure that we are providing opportunities for you to learn, grow, um, gain new skills um, and grow within our company. So you don't have to look outside the company to have that next step in your career and your um, job. So um, for example, I'm actually in one of these um, professional development classes right now. It's called Leadership in Motion. Um, and it's for managers, it's for first time managers or supervisors. Um, and it's working on those soft skills and learning how to be a great leader, um, things that um, you know you learn through experience. And Marriott takes the time to set aside several weeks and have, has a whole team dedicated to professional development and learning and growing with our associates. So these opportunities are offered also at every level. So either if you're an entry level and it's your first job all the way up into your senior executive leader and you're still looking for professional development, learning and growing opportunities are gonna be available throughout your whole career path here at Marriott. Rewards and recognition, Marriott does an amazing job of making sure our associates are recognized as well. Probably the biggest thing that we do is our Associate Appreciation Week. Um, and this is um, international throughout all of our properties. We set aside a week to just say thank you to our associates and it's done in a variety of ways of food and rallies and um, fun activities and award presentations. So that's just one part of how we are able to recognize our associates. Properties do a lot of different things um, along with Associate Appreciation Week, but we wanna make sure everyone is feeling recognized. Um, and then another um, thing about working with Marriott is that there's amazing benefits too. So first off, you get the free travel, you get the travel perks. So you get big discounts on not only just your room stays within Marriott and within all those brands that I showed you earlier on the screen all over the world. You not only get that, but if you are eating at a restaurant within one of our properties, golfing, going to the spa in the, in the shop and buying some merchandise, you get discounts on all of that too. And it's not only for you, it's also extended to your family and friends that you can provide, provide them discounts as well. Um, so huge perk, you'll never be able to play full price for a room again and you get a little spoiled, but it is great. Um, flexible scheduling is big on our um, at our properties as well, making sure that your schedule is working with your life and what you need to do. Um, our hotels in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, I can't speak for all of them um, throughout the whole company, but in our market, uh, most do provide a free meal while you're working and free parking. So you don't have to worry about either of those things while you're at work. Um, and if you don't drive, then and you're in your public transportation, we also have a lot of great commuter benefits um, where you can get discounts on those bus train passes as well. Um, for all of you students looking to expand your education after high school, um, we do offer tuition reimbursement as well, as long as it's related to the hospitality field. So there are a lot of things related to hospitality, so it's really easy to be able to get that tuition reimbursement. Um, so that'd be a great program, whether you're looking to go into an associate's program for culinary or go to a four-year college, um, any sort of um, accreditation there, you're going to be able to take advantage of that tuition reimbursement. We also provide paid leave, your basic medical, dental, vision, healthcare planning as well. And our retirement savings plan, 401k, does have an employer match too. So a lot of things be able to set you up for success and give you those opportunities. The next pillar in take care is all about community. 
Um, so take care isn't just about me as an associate and where I'm coming from, but it's about my fellow associates too, the Marriott community. Um, and being, we wanna make sure that we are all proud to be working for this company and what it represents. Um, this is strongly evidenced by the many awards Marriott has won as a premier employer. So we consistently make the um, world's best list um, through Forbes, Fortune, um, in the top 100, top 25 um, of places to work, and also recognized for um, a company that um, employs and puts people of different disabilities, um, diversity, LGBTQ plus communities, the Latinx community, um, really just making sure we're fostering that sense of community within our whole company. The last pillar of our take care program and our culture is all about purpose. So we wanna make sure we are instilling purpose into all of our employees, not just in their job, but in the world. And that as a company, we're doing the same. Um, so to fulfill the purpose pillar, we have our Serve 360 program, doing good in every direction, which is comprised of nurturing, empowering, sustainability, and welcoming and advancing human rights. Um, so some of the examples, we do a lot of volunteer um, hours and opportunities at our properties. Um, my favorite one is always over um, Christmas and we're able to provide gifts to those in needs and go into classrooms or volunteer at our local um, shelter, providing food over Thanksgiving. Um, we have a lot of those opportunities available to do as a group um, at our properties. Um, sustainability as well. Um, Right now, Marriott is working on the reduction of single-use plastics. So instead of having the little plastic bottles in the rooms um, for your shampoos, conditioners, and everything, we're starting to use the pumps um, in order to help um, contribute to a more sustainable world. So all together, opportunity, community, and purpose comprise our culture here at Marriott, um, no matter where you are. Now we're gonna get into what are the opportunities? You know, What kind of jobs can I have at Marriott? What um, career paths are there? So up on the screen now, there are, it's a lot of information, a lot of different job titles and a lot of different career paths. So I know today we're gonna to be focusing on the culinary path and you'll be able to see the department and then some of the um, common job titles that you'll see in these. Um, but the great thing about working in a hotel in the food and beverage industry is that there is a lot more opportunity to move up and also out. So you can expand your knowledge base. So in culinary, it's not just working in one restaurant. You can also work in banquets. You can work in the restaurant. You can do both. Um, you can And you can move up both of those ways. You could move to the front of the house and then you can move back to the back of the house again, depending on what you want to do with your job and what your end goals are. Um, and any of these positions, you can work your way up into the admin senior administration executive leadership as a director of operations or a general manager of a hotel as well. It all depends on your goals and what you want to do. Um, but all these paths can be a straight line. They can intersect. You can really make it your own journey throughout a hotel with so many different opportunities. Um, and the other great thing about having it within Marriott International and being such a large company, if you have to relocate, if the executive chef position you're looking for isn't available at your hotel, there might be another one at the hotel down the road or in the state you're relocating to. There's a lot more opportunity to grow up um, and you won't have to leave the company. You won't have to lose seniority or benefits, anything like that. Um, it's a really, really great way um, to expand your food and beverage knowledge in your career by being in hotels and also having all the perks as well. So now I'm going to turn it over to my chefs that I have with me, um, and they are going to go more in depth about their own journeys, how they got there, um, and what advice they have for all of you who are looking to um, start your career or build your career in the culinary and hospitality industry. So first up, we have Chef Joseph. Hi, everybody. So I'm the executive chef at the Renaissance Dallas. Um, I started with Marriott 12 years ago, and I started as a kitchen supervisor at JW Marriott Desert Ridge in Arizona. So I went to the Culinary Institute of America in New York. I got my associate's degree. I stayed on, and I did a fellowship program. So I was a basically a teaching assistant in the French restaurant on the campus. And I stayed on and got my bachelor's in hospitality management. 
Um, I, I worked with Marriott. I got in the door. I was in the banquet kitchen. And after about a year, they promoted me to sous chef. So I got my first manager role. And at the same hotel, I got lucky enough to move from banquets to restaurants. And I moved from banquet chef to senior restaurant chef. And I was running eight restaurants in a resort. And like Laura was, Laura was saying, that's when I had the opportunity to move across the country. I went from Arizona to Philadelphia. And I was a senior banquet chef at the Philadelphia Marriott uh, downtown. It was a 1400 room hotel. Um, and I was doing banquets and pastry there. Uh, after that, I had the opportunity to become the executive chef at the Philadelphia Airport Marriott. And I actually met Chef Robert when I was there. Uh, we both used to work in Pennsylvania. So it's, it's a very small culinary world. We all talk and know each other. Um, and uh, it right actually at the beginning of the pandemic, I moved to Dallas and became the executive chef of the Renaissance. And now I'm in charge, I'm, I'm leading the culinary council for Dallas. So all of these chefs will get together once a quarter and we'll all meet and we talk about, you know, the people we have under us. Where do we think they will be good to move on for their next role? Because it's not just you planning your future. You want your leader, your mentor to help you plan it, right? So we're going to say, hey, I have this person, they're doing great they're ready for the next step i don't have a position for them but hey i know you have a sous chef position open what do you think how about i introduce you and we'll help people move up and try and keep them in the company and we we want you to succeed and to grow um i mean the the best piece of advice i can give to anyone trying into to get into um the culinary world, especially in with Marriott, is don't don't shy away from the high, hard work. You're only gonna get out what you put in. If if you want to uh, cut corners or do things the easy way, it's gonna be a lot harder for you to move up than putting in the time and the effort. And when someone gives you a job, work hard at it. Keep pushing and. If you might have to do the same thing every day for months, but try and find a way to do it faster. And then when you finish it faster, ask them, hey, what else can I do? What else can I do to make your job easier so you can focus more of your time on me? And that will help you grow in your careers. Um, anything else I should talk about there, Laura? <laughs> I think you're good. Thank you. We'll have time for some question and answer if anyone has questions for you as well. Thank you, Chef. Right. Okay. And next we have Chef Robert. Hi, everybody. Uh, Robert Tabuenza here. I am currently the executive chef at the Westin here in Irvine at Las Colinas. Uh, I have had the pleasure to be the chef here for about a month and a half now. Now, I might be new to the Dallas market, but I am definitely not new to the company. Um, so like, uh, like Chef, I graduated also from the Culinary Institute of America. I think I was there uh, maybe a decade before him, though. So the gray hairs will show it. But uh, I graduated CIA, joined Marriott right out of uh, culinary school at the Marquis in Atlanta. Um, 1700 room we were doing back then about probably 25 million in food sales so I wanted to, to go big and go to one of the big houses and that place was phenomenal phenomenal for my career as well because I went in back then as what they called a, a manager in training at MIT now um, now we have uh, explorers or we have the voyagers but it was great because um, I was able to start there with one restaurant um, as the uh, manager in training. Shortly thereafter, I became the sous chef for that restaurant. Uh, and then they gave me two restaurants on what they call the garden level, the GL level. And this is just to kind of give you an idea of how you grow within one property. And from there, I became um, the sous chef of the garden level, which encompassed uh, three restaurants and 
the Atrium Express. Then after that, I took over the fifth restaurant. Then once I, I got my front of the house uh, and restaurant experience at that property under my belt, I went down to become the Garmage uh, sous chef. I was there for about a year. Then after that, I was uh, lucky to be promoted to the senior banquet chef, going over into the hot side. And just to give you guys an idea, as you're, as you're slowly growing, you're getting more uh, people under you that you have to manage, not only from an hourly point, but managers as well, junior managers and hourly associates. So it's a great learning uh, path to kind of slowly grow into these, into these positions. Uh, after I was the senior sous chef, uh, I became the uh, banquet chef at the Marquis. Then after, uh, after that, I became uh, the executive chef at the Atlanta Marriott Northwest. I was there for about a year and a half. Then um, the opportunity came up to go to Tennessee. So packed up the family. We moved to uh, Northeast Tennessee. I became the executive chef at the uh, at the Kingsport uh, Metaview uh, Resort and Convention Center. I was there for quite a while. We were there for maybe eight or 10 years. Then from there, we went to West T uh, Tennessee to become the executive chef at the Memphis Marriott downtown. Um, that was a great experience, uh, 600 room and about 100,000, uh, I'm sorry, 300,000 square feet of meeting space. So a very, very busy hotel. Then from there, we went back to Northeast Tennessee to Metaview was looking for a chef and we decided to go back. We love that area so much. Um, and about, uh, after, about another eight years there, then we went to uh, Pittsburgh, was an executive chef at the Western Pittsburgh downtown where I uh, met chef when we went to a thing where uh, Hershey invited all of us to go join them over in, uh, at their facility, all the Marriott chefs. And then recently I'm here at the Weston uh, Urban at Las Colinas. So uh, 25 year career right now with the company. And uh, I think that you're gonna hear a common theme amongst us, which is, uh, you know, get, get your education, go to school. But I would, I would recommend that while you're in, going to school or even, even now, if you're not in school, uh, start working in the industry whether it's, uh, whether it's a freestanding restaurant, whether it's a corporate restaurant, whether it's a hotel, get your foot in the door, start getting some real hands-on experience under your belt. If you have the opportunity to work and go to school at the same time, all the power to you, even more, I would do that. Uh, I can tell you that education is very important um, to me, but so is uh, hands-on experience. So put the two, side by side and you become much more valuable to a hiring chef. I would also, um, you know, recommend what chef was saying about, you know, put your head down, put the time in, do the work. Uh, we've all had to do that. We, those of us who, who went and got formal education, we came out with this degree and we still had to go in and start uh, from the bottom and work our way up. Everybody has to do it. I'm a true believer that if you work every, every station of your kitchen, that you will have an appreciation for what the people that, event, that eventually report to you, um, what they do, the hard work they put in. And once you have an appreciation for doing that job and what it takes to do it, then there's a certain level of respect and, and um, they understand you, you understand them and you can speak to what they're doing. Um, and you know the job. Should you need to do it yourself, you can jump right in, which happens quite a bit. Uh, the other thing I would tell you is, um, besides just putting your head down and doing the work, is just keep something in mind. You know, the more I find that the more people I work for or with, the better I become. Good, bad, or indifferent. I feel if you ever have to work for somebody who's just not the most pleasant or the nicest person. You will still learn from that person, right? You're going to learn how not to be, how not to behave, and you'll be a better uh, chef, a better leader, a better manager in the future. So uh, I would say you don't realize it, but you're learning every single day. The other piece of advice I would give you is always uh, try to surround yourself. At least I do this all the time. I try to surround myself with people that I feel I can learn from. Um, I don't think a day goes by I don't learn something. 
whether it's culinary or any aspect of the business. And um, like we were, we were speaking to earlier, um, the opportunities within the company are enormous. I mean, just th the fact that uh, I'm, a, I'm a Northern, you know, I'm a New Yorker that's traveled all over the East Coast and uh, up and down the, the coast and had opportunities to do task force at other properties in, in Florida and in Detroit and all over the country. And then now to be here in Dallas, I think is phenomenal. I mean, I wouldn't trade my career for anything. Uh, super excited about it. And as I look back and reflect back, especially doing, doing this with you guys, uh, I think about all of the folks that uh, I've helped along their career and where they are now. Some of them are, uh, are uh, directors of food and beverage and doing, uh, doing great careers and have very long, uh, prosperous careers. And um, that, always, that always makes me happy. And then the people that I've met and networked with throughout my career also, uh, like Jeff was saying, it, a, large, a large world becomes really small community when you start to realize who you know all over the country and, and sometimes all over the world. Um, that's, that's kind of my, my advice to you guys. Um, and uh, good luck with everything you're doing. Just keep your head down and keep at it. Thank you, Chef. Absolutely. Now we have Chef Johnny. Hello, everyone. First of all, I just wanna thank everyone for allowing me to be here. I think it's great that a program like this exists. Um, a little bit about me. I, uh, I originally grew up in Texas, so um, I came up a little bit different from Chef Robert and Chef Joe. Um, I was actually doing um, some banking work um, early on in my career, something I knew I always hated. Um, I always knew what my passion was, but for the most part, wasn't really committed to it. So there was an event that happened in my life um, that kind of forced me to make a choice. And that choice was to pursue what I've always wanted to do, which is get into this industry, get into this field. Um, so I ended up packing everything up, quit my job, sold everything, moved to New York. 20 years later, uh, I'm back in Dallas. Um, now, when I made that switch, I, I did my research as far as what it's going to be like, um, what I needed to do to prepare myself to be in this industry. Um, and so I did a lot of reading. Um, I talked to a lot of uh, local hospitality workers in the area before I decided to make that decision. So um, having done that, I was more comfortable and expected to be um, in an industry where the work is, it can be extremely difficult. So especially in New York, I, uh, I took a little bit of a different path, I guess a longer path. My predominantly most of my career, um, my experience has been in independent restaurants. Um, I went to culinary school in New York as well, Institute of Culinary Education. Um, while I was in school, I was also working as uh, Chef Robert had alluded to before. Um, I think that goes, as far as your growth and learning, that really was beneficial. You can sit there and, and study about all the, um, all the techniques that you're learning in school and actually apply them while you're working. Now, it's not for everybody because that is a ton of hours and that's something you really need to commit to. Um, but after culinary school, my plan was to basically enter as many of the top rated restaurants that I could get into and just, just put my head down and go to work and learn as much as I could. Um, I ended up um, probably about six, seven years later, whereas my first foray into the hotel industry. Um, to keep it to Marriott, my first uh, hotel or my first Marriott was uh, the Ritz Carlton up in Central Park. And I came in as the executive sous chef and eventually made the exec position. Um, I was there for about four years. And then I, uh, I decided that I, I, I was really homesick at that point towards the end. So uh, we decided to move to Dallas, uh, back home. And this opportunity came up here, the Marriott Dallas Uptown. Um, it, it took a lot 
for me to come back down. It would need to have taken a lot, um, but this property and this area and what it's become checked all the boxes off for me. So that decision was made and you know, I came back probably, I wanna say January 8th is when I started here. Um, so as it's gonna be a common theme um, as far as what the others, other chefs had said, as far as your, uh, as far as trying to get into this industry and if, if this is something that you actually wanna do, um, it really starts with a passion for it. Um, and if you don't have that, especially in this industry, you're, you're not gonna very, last very long. Um, so what I would suggest starting off is absolutely go to culinary school, um, but also get your feet wet and, and go to local restaurants, see if you can at least apply and work to, to get some sort of experience whether they put you in dish or whatever station they put you at. You'll have the chance to see how everything works, how restaurant runs, if this is for you. Um, I would suggest doing that and just pursue it if this is something for you. So um, like me, try to get into as many of the best restaurants or, or hotels that you can get into. Learn as much as you can, see as much as you can, and build your resume. Um, what follows you in this industry is your skill set and your work ethic. So, um, as I know, that's a lot to think about, and 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 you guys are early on in your career. So, um, I would say do your research, make sure this is for you, and then just go for it. Thank you. Okay. So next we have Chef Mario. Unfortunately, Chef Mario did have something come up. Um, so he was not able to make it today, but I did want to keep in a slide just so you could see a little bit of a different path. Um, um, Chef Mario was one of our chefs who started as a dishwasher and worked his way up the entire time. So you can see here on the screen, he has his advice for you um, and he has that way to recommend starting your path. Um, but I just wanted to leave his slide in here so you guys could see just a little bit of a different path up to that executive chef level as well. Um, but even though Chef Mario could not make it today, we do have our general manager of the property, Reggie, um, who wanted to come here and speak with you all as well. Well, good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you so much for allowing me the opportunity to uh, join you. Uh, I feel honored to be able to join such talent uh, that's up on the screen here with our Dallas uh, executive uh, chef culinary team. And um, all of the um, career paths that I've heard uh, just excites me and I know it excites you um, given the field that you're um, getting ready to get into. It is a awesome uh, field. Uh, as was mentioned, um, there's lots of hard work, but also there's lots of rewards. Uh, it is an awesome field uh, to be in. Uh, Chef Mario, uh, yes, is here at the Marriott DFW Westlake, and uh, we're excited to have him here. And um, again, Chef uh, has been uh, in the business since the age of 17 uh, and started at one of our Marriott hotels in Anaheim, California. Uh, but we are so lucky to have him as well as all of the culinary leadership here in the Dallas area. Um, I've been uh, in the hospitality industry myself for just shy of 30 years. I started out in a line level position as was listed uh, on one of those slides where Laura uh, put up that there's so many different positions within the hospitality industry. And so I came up in the operations and started out as a night auditor and worked my way up to different positions within the industry and have been a general manager of full service hotels for the last 15 years. And i um, really excited about what we do. And I like working alongside our culinary team um, my hotel that I was at in Kansas City, it was 1,500 rooms. We had 150,000 square feet of meeting and banquet space. And uh, we put on some awesome events. Um, but those were executed, uh, all aspects, by our uh, culinary leader, which is our executive chef. 
And so uh, these gentlemen put on a great show, uh, no matter how large or how small. And I'm just proud to be part of the Marriott um, uh, organization, as well as the uh, talent that's here in Dallas. And so, um, you know, I just wanted to come on and say hello and represent the Marriott Westlake on behalf of Chef Mario. Uh, but again, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to join you. Awesome, thank you. Okay, so that those are all the guests that I had with me today. And I just wanna finish this presentation off by thank you, thanking all of you for joining us and learning about Marriott. Um, if any of it sounded fun or interesting or where you wanna get your career started, um, we are hiring. So we are hiring all over the world, um, but for um, those in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, um, please take note of my information, or even if you're not in Dallas-Fort Worth, I can still help connect you. Um, and I am able to help you um, find the position you're looking for, kind of whittle down all those job openings and figure out what is the best position for me to start at. Um, and then be basically your personal recruiter to be able to get in touch with those properties you applied for and try and get you into the positions we have open right now. Um, we have plenty open in culinary, um, no matter what level that you're at, if you are looking for your first job or looking for something in between, um, front of the house positions, basically everything that was on that previous slide, we have something for you to get that career started. Um, so please let me know if you plan on applying or once you apply, and I would love to be able to help you get started. Thank you so much, Laura and team. That was absolutely amazing. Um, at the moment, I don't see any Q&A questions, um, but Laura's information is here if you have any questions after the fact. I will also drop my email in the chat below in case um, you have any questions that I can pass along to the team. But thank you so much for taking the time to uh, join along with the Classroom to Career program. We'll be having some more every month, uh, so stick, stick around for those as well. And this will be recorded, like I mentioned, on our YouTube channel. And so check out uh, this video there as well. But thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye.